All right, so we got our home screen all set up, ready to go on the interface side. Next thing we want to do is actually set up the list of currencies. So when we tap this USD or this GBP, so the base and the quote currency buttons, we want to open up a list of all the available currencies for our application. And I'll do that using a flat list, that way users can scroll through it. Uh, taking a look at what we're actually building in this lesson, it's ugly, I know that but we'll work on styling it in the next lesson. This is just purely focused on setting up the flat list. Uh, so that's the component we're going to use and we can just jump right into it. So since this is a new screen, we're gonna go ahead and actually create that new screen and we'll do that in our screens directory. We're going to say currency list.js and in here we want to import react from react. We're also going to, uh, actually, you know what, that's fine for now. We will then say const currency list is just going to uh, return null for right now just so we can actually point the entry point of our application to this currency list since we don't have routing set up right now. Uh, save this and then we will go ahead and go to our index file and instead of importing home from screens home, whoops, we will import currency list from currency list and then we will actually return that for our application. And you can see we've got this plain white screen. That's perfect, that's what we're looking for. Now the next thing we wanna do is actually set up the data that we'll use to actually generate this uh, currency list. And this is just gonna be some static data. We don't need to request it from anywhere. So what I'm going to do is actually create a new directory and call this data, just so we keep everything separated from the rest of our application and just make it uh, clear what it is. And then I'm going to call this currencies.js. And the reason I'm putting this on the client side and just hard coding it in is because the currencies our API actually is aware of and knows the conversion rate for doesn't change very often if it's ever changed. So we can just store it in the client. It's one less remote request we have to make to a server, which will just improve uh, the client side user experience. So we've got our data set up. Now we can go ahead and actually start setting up our flat list component and if we go and look here you can see this is actually going to be our flat list so this is going to be scrollable and then we're returning some text elements here and those will just be our currencies so we need to import the view component and the flat list so we'll import view or sorry we need to import the text component and the flat list component so with that, we can then set this up and actually start returning our component. Uh, so we're going to say flat list, and then the first thing we need to do is actually pass data. Data can just be a plain array, and if we look at our currencies array, that's all it is. It's just an array of text items, so we can go ahead and import that into this file. We'll say import currencies from dot dot slash data slash currencies and then we can pass that array of currencies as the data prop to Flatlist. Now, the next thing we need to do is actually tell the Flatlist how to render our items, and there's a prop called render item to do just that. And this will take a function, and from there we'll just return uh, whatever the data is we want to return. And to access the data for the current item that's being rendered, you can use array de destructuring here, and then there's a prop called item, and that represents the current item uh, for this render item function. And in this case, it's just going to be a string, which represents our currency, so we can just return the item there. So when I save that, we actually see this rendering. We can see we can scroll through it. It's ugly, I know that, but we'll take care of that. Uh, but you can see we're, we're seeing this error down here for virtualized list, missing keys for items. Uh, make sure to specify a key property on each item or provide a custom key extractor. Because we're not using an object for each one of our items, and even if we were, we might not have a key property on that. For example, I use Mongo a lot. It's under, underscore ID represents kind of the unique key. So we need to specify a key extractor function. And that's super easy to do. It's just another prop we pass to the, the flat list and it's key extractor. And this too is going to be a function and we just need to return whatever our key should be. And since we're just returning strings, our key should be the actual item that's currently being rendered. Um, and then to access this, this is a kind of a, an issue I have with this API, but rather than accessing the 
item in the same way we do for the render item we actually just it's the first parameter of this function so if I save this and let it re-render you'll see we're no longer getting that error and we can scroll through our list with no problem so the next thing we want to do for the screen is up here and this is due to our home screen having a white status bar we want to actually set this up so that it's visible on the screen uh, to do that we're going to import the view and the status bar from react native and the reason we're importing view is because we can only return one component from our components and in that case the best thing to do is just wrap your component with a view and you'll be good to go so I'll say view here uh, take the content of my app and, or the screen put it in here and then inside of this view we want to make sure that this view takes up the entirety of the screen available otherwise our flat list uh, might start clipping so to do that we'll just say style is equal to flex1 um, and flex1 is just going to tell react native which uses flexbox uh, to take up all of the available space then we can go ahead and set up our status bar so we'll just say status bar and then if you remember we want to say bar style and in this case since we don't want the light content we're going to set that to default and then we also want to set translucent to false um, save this whoa save this and then you can see even though our text is kind of bumped into it we'll take care of that later we can actually see the status bar now for the screen